Welcome to the video on the final words from the tutor on this paper called as F9 Financial Management. Just introducing myself to you all, my name is Preeti Joseph, I am the F9 tutor with Phoenix Financial Training. Giving you an idea about the format of the paper, okay, the paper is now split into two sections. You have section A as well as you have section B. Under section A, it's mainly multiple choice questions. There are totally 20 questions. Each of the questions are going to be worth two marks. So that gives you a total of 40 marks in the whole paper. What will be normally tested in section A would be mainly heavily on the theory bits of the whole syllabus. The examiner has recommended, has suggested saying that there will be easily, you know, 12 to 13 questions revolving around the theory bits, yeah, where the remaining would be on numbers because the examiner does not want to test numbers as on section A as he will be testing it in section B. So do focus on the theory bits uh, because as we say, if you look at the balance between the F9, uh, there is 50% theory and there is 50% numbers. So it's a good balance between the two. So please do ensure you do focus on the theory bits of the syllabus as well because it would be tested in section A. Moving on to section B of the paper, there are two styles of questions. There's three 10 mark questions and there are two 15 marker questions. Okay? Starting with the 15 mark question, uh, what can be tested in the 15 mark questions would be on working capital management, it can be on investment appraisals, yeah, it can be even on business or source of finance valuations is what we're talking about. So likable areas that can be tested for you guys, if you're talking about working capital management, they may test you on something like receivable management in terms of how do you manage your receivables like you can offer settlement discounts to your customers you can look at questions on factoring yep whereas if you look at the other areas of working capital management that can be tested they can talk about maybe a question on inventory management they can even ask you a question on payables management in terms of you receiving a discount from your suppliers whether is it acceptable or not is it financially acceptable or not so that's one of the questions that can come for you as a 15 marker. The second 15 marker question, it can either be on you know, investment appraisals, it can be on you know, business valuation. So let's say if it's on investment appraisal question, it can be uh, on net present value. So they'll give you a whole investment project and they'll ask you to calculate what is the net present value on that particular project. Is it going to be feasibly acceptable for us to accept the project? You can have part B on internal rate of returns, it can be on sensitivity analysis, capital rationing maybe. So it can be other areas with so that whole topic on investment appraisals you need to be comfortable with. Whereas the third probable area that can be examined is on business or source of finance and business valuations. Yeah, where they will ask you uh, to do a bit on financial ratio calculations and evaluate the business based on that. So they may ask you to calculate gearing ratios, maybe you can talk about interest coverage ratios, debt to equity ratio, you know, um, dividend cover ratio, current ratio, quick ratios. It can be any ratios they may ask you to calculate and they'll ask you to come and advise on the feasibility of this project or should we, you know, redeem the debt, what is the effect on the shareholders' wealth. So there can be any areas on those. Along with that, there can be a part where they'll ask you in terms of how is this going to have an effect on the value of the company. That is when you may bring in terms like evaluation. Yeah, where they'll ask you to value the company based on you know dividend growth model, based on PE ratio, PE method, or you know market capitalization of the company. So these topics you just need to be comfortable around with that. That's technically the 15 mark questions that we're talking about. Whereas if you look at the other side of the paper, section B, where you have the three 10 mark questions. Under that, you can have a question on, let's say, VAC, that's your weighted average cost of capital, either one, whether it be a risk-adjusted VAC or a normal VAC. You would do a normal VAC if uh, the risk of the investment is similar to the risk of the entity, 
but if anywhere in the scenario they say that the risk of the investment is different from the risk of the entity then you would do a risk adjusted back so either one of them it will be examined so you need to be comfortable with all the adjustments and all the calculations as to how do you calculate cost of equity cost of debt cost of reference shares you need to be comfortable with all of that that's one probable 10 mark question that we're looking at Whereas another area that can be tested for you guys is on foreign exchange risk management. Foreign exchange risk management, you need to be very comfortable with it in terms of how you calculate uh, you know, forward markets, how you calculate money market hedging. Along with, you need to be comfortable with interest rate risk management as well in terms of what are the different hedging techniques that is available, yeah, how, uh, what are the factors that affect a yield curve maybe. Yeah, so these are different areas, probable areas that can be tested. Another question can be revolving around from the point of view of uh, like sources of finance. Over there, you need to be comfortable with Islamic finance. Yeah, what are the different types of Islamic finances? Yeah, like you have Mudaraba, you have Musharaka, you have Ijara, you have Sukuk. So you need to be comfortable with each and every one of them. Along with a highly probable area is something on efficient market hypothesis where they'll ask you to talk about what do you mean by a weak form, a semi-strong form, a strong form efficiency. So these are certain thing, areas, topic areas that you need to be comfortable with before you go into your exam hall. Along with that, you know, um, in section A of the paper, the examiner will ask you questions revolving around macroeconomic environment. They can ask you on sources of finance as well in terms of different systems, financial systems. They can ask you on theories of gearing as well. So if you're talking about macroeconomic environment, you need to be comfortable with what do you mean by you know, a monetary policy, what do you mean by physical core policy, what do you mean by government intervention. Yeah, in different financial systems, you need to be comfortable with what do you mean by capital market, what do you mean by money market, what do you mean by intermediary, you know, different externalities. These are different topics that you need to be comfortable with. Theories of gearing, also you need to be comfortable with. This can be tested for you either in section A of the paper or in section B of the paper. Um, it depends. If it's section A of the paper, it will be a simple multiple choice question. Uh, if it's a section B of the paper, it can come as a five mark question for you where they'll ask you to talk about what is the traditional theory of theory, modiglia Miller with tax, modiglia Miller without tax. So just be comfortable with that area of the syllabus as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I've literally covered almost every single probable area that can be examined for you guys. Um, I hope you guys all enjoyed watching this video. I hope these tips will be beneficial for you in terms of preparing for the exam, the, the last few days before you go for your exam. Uh, all the very best. I hope you all come out with flying colors. So, best of luck for the exam. Thank you.